Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and today we're going to talk about this problem from the last educational round, diff 2D and the problem is make them equal. Now this is a good problem of combination of ad, ad hoc plus DP and it's a really like simple but observational problem. So we're going to decompose how you could have solved this particular problem in an actual contest and how you should be going about thinking for these kind of problems when they appear, right? So let's move into the problem directly. If you learn whatever you learn in this particular thing, this might be a problem which has some caveats into it. So whatever you learn out of this, make sure that you comment down below because that is going to create a lot of pool of what learnings people have from these videos. And we're going to keep a target as usual, like 100 is something that we keep continuing for the whole series. And if, you, if we meet that, we're going to increase up the number of videos per week to actually four actually. Like this is something I'm planning on for some time now that uh, as of now, the number of videos every week that comes out is three. Lead code, code forces and ad coder. I'm planning on to add a fourth branch, which is like from now on every week might contain four videos. But again, for that, you might need to make the number of comments for this particular video to reach 100. Okay, so let's see whenever we start reaching that number, we'll start having a one extra video per week, right? Okay, so let's start with this particular problem. You have an array A of size N. Initially, all numbers of the array are equal to one and we can do this operation that any A of I can go from A of I to A of I plus A of I by X where you choose X with respect, like up, it's up to you what you want to choose and it can, it should be greater than zero. Like you cannot incre increase it infinitely. It should be from uh, one, two, three and so on. And if you can make A of I equal to B of I, in that case, you receive a coin reward C of I. Uh, the total number of moves that you are given with this kind of a situation is K and you have to distribute that those moves across the all the positions and the maximum number of positions that you can match is the reward that you get, maximize your reward, that is there. Right. So it's, it's a very, very good problem. If you think about it from if in the terms of what actually is required in it, right? The first thing that is there is this portion where we have this weird kind of an operation a of I plus a of I by X, right? So this is the whole reading part. Before we move on to, let's say solving and formulating, let's have a quick look, look at what is the constraints. There are test cases, but some of N up to test cases is 10 to power three and, uh, n is up to 10 to the power 3, k which is the number of moves is up to 10 to the power 6 which is pretty large, b of i and c of i are given to you and a of i's initially are all 1's and then we have to increase based on that, right? Yeah, so they are also 10 to the power 3 and ci is up to 10 to the power 6, okay. So now if you think about this, so we have read the problem, next let's try to solve or observe something into this particular problem, right? Observe. So there is this particular move a of i equal to a of i plus a of i by x where you can choose the value of x, right? Nice. So and x is greater than zero. Let's try and put few values of x in this particular thing. Let's say put x equal to one, right? And you immediately get this as a of i equal to two times a of i. So which means we can always double the number at any point in time we want to, right? So going from this one, going to two, four and so on up till any particular number, let's say uh, 16, 8, so on, like the powers of 2 is pretty easy, right? And then what we can kind of also see that at any point in time, you can bifurcate, like kind of switch the track and maybe increase the number by 1. You can always choose x equal to a of i, right? Whatever the current a of i is. And you can always go from a of i to a of i plus 1, right? So we can always go to the next number as well for any number, which means every number is reachable for sure, okay? It's just that what is the number of moves that is required, right? Now we can see that in the question, the different BIs that are given to us, right, is up to 10 to power three only. And every time we start with one, so every position is like an independent problem, right? Like every position is independently behaving and we need to find out, let's say the minimum number of moves, because if we are having a limited number of moves, we would like to expense out the minimum number of moves in any particular position, right? So we want to find the minimum number of moves from one to a particular BI at any particular I index, right? So the way we can do that is we can set up this particular graph and do a BFS. If you want to go down the, let's say BFS or graph way, but a very simple way to do that would be to use DP. Like we can reach one in zero moves from over here. We can reach two in one move. Okay. We can, uh, then like from two, we can add. So from any a of I, okay. A of I equal to a of I plus a of I by X. Okay. This is the operation. What we can do is we can loop over different values of X and we can create this like from which from move, which, uh, which places do you reach to, right? You can also do build this particular operation in order root n if you want to, because there is this theorem, which says that a of I by X 
floor can take approximately two root n different values, right? So we can actually build this in n root n if you want to. But again, since the a AIs or sorry the BIs are pretty small up to 10 to the power three, we can loop over all the values from zero to like from one to a of i, and that would give us a for every position you would need order 10 to the power three, and there are 10 to the power three such positions. So in total, it would be 10 to the power six. So it's fine. So for every cell, just move over loop over every x values and add the edges or add the transitions to those positions, right? Maybe whichever are possible, three and four is possible from two, right? So you can reach three in two moves, four in two moves, right? And correspondingly add it. So we can kind of find out dp of i, right? And uh, the way we do that is, like, let's say you have uh, this at one. So dp of i is let's say some x value. So from this you can push this value. So you have to write a forward dp in that sense, and you will have to push this value to, like, let's say you you will have to write dp of i plus i by some y looping over all different y's you can take a minimum this particular index with the value x plus one because from this if you can reach this value at x with x number of moves you can reach this particular value with x plus one number of moves so just take a minimum at this position with this right and with that you can actually save the best position value for every different bi right what is best possible number of moves that is required for every bi Right, so that's the first part. You can do it with a graph. A simple BFS would suffice. A uh, DP formulation would suffice. Why we are able to use DP in this problem? Because every number can only increase. Right, there is this setup that every number can only increase or can stay at the same place, which is never an optimal choice. So in that case, there is all the edges are kind of in the forward direction. So it's a DAG, right? Directed acyclic graph. In directed acyclic graph. If there is a shortest path problem, you can solve it with DP rather than using some graph algorithm. That's the general difference between DP and graph shortest path algorithms. Every shortest path algorithm, shortest path problem on a DAG can be solved with DP. Okay, but anyways, that's just a quick learning if you ha have not thought about it this way. Let's move on to next thing, which is let's say for every B of i in the range, let's say one to ten to the power three, you have the optimal cost or optimal number of moves that you need from one to reach this bi right let's say that that's, let's call this some d of i okay whatever is required to make that particular index go from 1 to d of i now there is this array given to us and initially all of them were one so for each position to match with uh, the particular b of i you have to pay a d of i cost and in return you will get a plus ci value if it matches right so if you can see that for every position you have to get at least d of i this is the weight of it and this is the profit you get of it, right? And it's exactly knapsack problem, right? For every object, if you want to make it taken into the set, you have to pay a price of D of I number of moves, wherein the total limitation is up to K moves, right? Which is very similar to knapsack's total weight. And the profit that you get from that particular object is plus C of I, which is the profit of every object in a knapsack problem. So if you don't know about knapsack problem, go check out what is a knapsack problem. It's a very standard problem in DP and it can be solved for, like this is actually a like a change form of that same problem right so we can actually see that there are n objects right n n, n objects and each of this each of them has a d of i and c of i right and you have you are given a total budget of k you have to find the optimal profit that you can make out of it and this is a standard knapsack problem and can be solved in order n into k in general using dynamic programming now there is this small caveat in this one problem, which because it's a code forces problem and no one is going to give you a standard deep knapsack problem. There is this small caveat that you have to observe in, observe in this kind of a problem, right? And that is that you can actually solve this in better than n into k. Why do we need to solve it in better than n into k? Because in the problem, it's given that n is up to 10 to power 3 and k is up to 10 to power 6. So it kind of moves to 10 to power 9 and that's fairly difficult to solve. So how do we optimize this? by a simple observation. That's always the general trick and code process in general that we have to observe the values of this DP of I or the values of D of I, right? D of I, right? Let's, let's optimize the, let's see the cost of this D of I. You will observe that for any value of B of I until 10 to power three, the values of D of I range only in the range one, zero to 12, right? This is an observation in this case. And how can you think about this kind of an observation in an actual context? Because I'm telling you that it's going to be something like this. How can you do so, right? As soon as you see it's a standard problem, something should click in your mind that there has to be some observation that can optimize this because it's a generic version, right? But we cannot really solve it in this complexity. So there has to be some caveat into it, okay? Where are the places where you can change things? C of I, 
and now that's the profit it can be anything weights maybe because i have calculated it using some bfs and we saw that like jumping directly was possible like in this case we could have jumped twice so maybe the number of jumps required is very very small for every position which is true in this case because this actually allows you to have so much of freedom in in terms of movement that you can actually jump to any position you want you can do a of i by 2 you can do a of i by 3 and jumping from a of i to any other position is very very small number of jumps right so th that's why this particular move is kind of very very uh, this makes the total number of moves very very small close to 12 which is an observation stuff in this case but again what you can do is you can just simply loop over the whole array get the minimum value of or uh, maximum value of d of i and use that over here because let's say the maximum value is some let's say capital d right so the two if you want to convert the whole array into b of i is the total cost would be d into n right if the maximum is this if you convert every index it will cost you d into n and we are saying that d into n is less than equal to 12 into n in this case it's it's observational but whatever it is it is very small so if you ever get if you ever get k bigger than equal to 12 into n right what does that mean you always have enough operations to convert all the indexes into the b of i and you are going to get the whole c of i's like whatever profits there are that you need right so just simply before solving the problem with dp just take min of k k equal to min of k comma 12n right and then solve this particular problem using the standard knapsack so from n into k it becomes order n square and you can check n is actually given to be 10 to the power 3 so n square will pass in this case right so this is the one caveat that is there in this problem rest all is standard algorithmic stuff you should be able to recognize these problems when there is like 10 to the power 3 and you have to get the number of minimum number of moves it should be some bfs or dp kind of in formulation it's a you have to recognize that this is a actual knapsack problem just in disguise right so this is these are things that you have to build while you're doing algorithmic practice and this is what code force generally adds to problems which is the ad hoc flavor or constructive flavor to it that you have to observe that it's very small and this observation comes from number 1 either looking at this kind of a pattern first okay number 2 by recognizing either this problem so it boils down into a standard problem so there has to be a caveat because i cannot really solve it better than this in terms of algorithmic sense you have to know it's an abstract problem i cannot solve it better than this so something has to be small in the problem i have to observe it up or the third thing is if you have previously interacted with same kind of an operation right this kind of an operation a of i by x right if you have interacted with this you will understand that okay uh, for this kind of a graph it's it's very close it's a tight graph and you know the number of moves is pretty small so these three are the ways in which mostly the senior senior people kind of solve these kind of problems and the same thing you can implement for in in case you're going to see something similar right so that's i guess all for this particular problem next is just to formulate this up so if we just quickly formulate this one the steps would be okay uh, so from 1 to any bi that's independent of the test cases so what we can do is we can pre process okay pre process for every bi in the range 10 to the power 3 to let's say 0 what is the d of i what is the minimum cost required and then for every n solve the knapsack just take k as min of k comma 12n right because you cannot have more than this and if you use this and then solve with a knapsack it gives you a order n square solution which is sufficient for this particular problem right so that's all there is for this particular problem and this would be a wrap for this particular week we talked about three different dp problems if you have not checked out the previous videos do check it out they are pretty interesting and have good ideas in them they are not very difficult if you try to understand them so do check them out and also if you want to look at other videos there are few videos like um, how to solve coding problems in general there is this recent video that i uploaded which was in a bit uh, fancy fashion like added a bit of post processing right uh, post production to be honest and then there was this particular video where i talked about um, growth in general if you are facing on these kind of issues so those are things would be there on the channel go check out the videos like the video and definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to continue with the content also make sure that you kind of keep a heads on onto the like uh, content timeline that we are going to having so there is uh, a particular post on the community section where i have asked for like different kind of psychological problems that is there so i'm going to keep on making some more videos mostly in those uh, like post production kind of fashion wherein we going to have discussion on some problems that people face like let's say debugging or let's say how do you miss out how do you tackle these kind of fomos wherein you have where you like tend to see the rank list repeatedly to see where your friends are 
or get depressed out of these things, right? So how to tackle these things, how to manage your studies versus comprehensive programming and all these things. So we're going to talk about these things quite often in the channel going forward. But again, the three weekly videos is going to be there. Also, the challenge for 100 comments is always there. If, if, if any particular week we hit 100 comments on one of the videos, we're going to be going forward and having a fourth video on the next week which is going to be something that I will ask on the com co community channel, right? So do check them out, okay? Do comment below what you learned. Hello, that's all for today. That's a wrap. That's all for this week as well. See you in the next week with more such problems on Code, Elite Code and Code Forces. So bye-bye everyone.